the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Suffer as to reign. They found the holy girl sitting on a high throne, and her beautiful face shining like the sun. This is how her executioners repeatedly found St. Prisca in the midst of her passion, seated on a throne, shining radiantly. One of the four characteristics of the resurrected body, the, the one that the just will receive at the end of time, when the body is perfected and reunited with the soul at the final judgment, is what's called clarity or luminosity or brightness, which describes how the glorified body of the just will be with such beauty and radiance that they will be, as St. Matthew says, shine as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. It seems with today's saint that God did not only did not want to delay in waiting to show Prisca's holiness and a glimpse of her future brightness and her place in his kingdom, a kingdom which, would not, which not only exists in heaven, but on earth, in the church, and in a society properly ordered, a kingdom which is directly opposed to the kingdom of Satan. Prisca's story is one of great torments, but also one of great wonders, which points to the kingdom of heaven. It was at the time when Claudius Caesar issued the edict that all Christians must offer sacrifice to the gods or be put to death in the most cruel way. And of the many Christians rounded up, Prisca was one of them, only about 11 or 13 years old, of royal blood and of the utmost holiness. When the emperor saw her and her beauty, he told her of his plan to make her his mistress and even offered her a share of his kingdom. Prisca refused and was brought to the temple of Apollo. She then asked the emperor, have you brought me here so that you can see the power of the one true God? All were silent and awaited what she would do. At this Prisca prayed, glory be to you, O glorious Father, I invoke you and I implore you to cast down this motionless and dumb idol, this emblem of the false of falsehood and corruption. Hear me a sinner, that the emperor may know how vain is the hope he has placed in his idols, and that he ought to adore no other god but you alone. At this, a great earthquake shook the whole city. The statue of the false god fell to the ground, and a quarter of the temple was destroyed, along with many of its worshipers and priests. The emperor fled terrified. The demon who dwelt in the idol cried out, O virgin Prisca, handmaid of the great God who reigns in heaven, you who keep his commandments has stripped me of my dwelling place. I have lived here for 67 years and have under me 93 other demons. I order each of them to sacrifice to me daily 50 souls of men. O emperor, persecutor of the Christians, you have found a holy soul through whom you will finish your reign in disgrace. At that, the emperor ordered Prisca to be repeatedly struck in the face, but her executioners lost their strength as they could not hurt the girl. Again, she was offered the powers of Caesar's kingdom, refusing a second time, after which she was beaten severely with whips. But while praying, her body became bright with light and white as snow. It was at the next torture, when beaten with rods, that Prisca simply smiled and said to the emperor, O enemy of God, you are too blind to know the blessings you are gaining from me, from the eternal creator. She was then cast into prison, where multiple angelic voices 
were heard coming from her cell, and a sweet smell of perfume was perceived. They found her sitting on a throne, surrounded by a multitude of angels, and in her hand she held a tablet, which read the psalm, How great are thy works, O Lord! Her executioners fled in fear. The emperor again demanded her to go into now the partially ruined temple and offer sacrifice. Upon entering, the demon who inhabited another idol cried out, Woe to me! Where shall I fly from your spirit, O God of heaven? Fire is pursuing me from all the four corners of the temple. Prisca made the sign of the cross and prayed, Lord God, hear my prayer and destroy this idol, made by the hands of men and used by the demon as an instrument of deceit and malice. And let Claudius know that you alone are blessed in eternity. In a loud voice, she commanded the demon to depart. And with that, a great noise of thunder was heard, and fire fell from heaven and consumed the priests of the temple, and with them a great multitude. The royal purple garment on the right arm of the emperor was burned, and the idol was reduced to ashes. Oh, how futile it is to war against the kingdom of God. We see here God sending a warning to Claudius by burning his royal garment. Christ said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus alone is king of all nations and all kings. All emperors must cast their crowns at his feet. Still not heeding this warning, the emperor, enraged, ordered her to be torn to pieces by iron hooks. Prisca ex exclaimed to her torturers, Your emperor has been conquered by a little girl through Jesus Christ. I will not sacrifice to your idols. Torment me as you please. After being, struck, after being stretched on a rack and cut with small knives, and pierced with hooks, she was again thrown into prison. Once again, found the next day, sitting on a throne, with her face shining as the sun. The emperor ordered her to be sent to the lions. When approached by the roaring lion, who had not eaten for four days, he leaned forward and gently kissed her feet. The emperor, thinking that it was the gods, said, Humble yourself and acknowledge the gods, for they are helping you. Prisca responded, They cannot help themselves. How can they help me? In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, by my combat, by my martyrdom, they are annihilated. After another three days of imprisonment, she was then ordered to be burnt by fire. But immediately there came a great wind which scattered the flames, burning instead all those who stood around it. Totally humiliated and defeated by this little girl, he ordered all her hair to be cut and locked, in, and locked her in the temple. Day and night she, she could be heard praising God and even the pagan priests would not dare go in while she was praying because they heard the voices of heavenly spirits. Again, when they opened the doors on the third day, for the third time, she was found seated on a throne surrounded by a crowd of angels. With the idol lying at her feet, Prisca said, Do you see him reduced to dust? Enraged, the emperor ordered her to be beheaded. Turning her eyes toward heaven, she prayed, O Lord Jesus Christ, who has liberated me from all these evils intended for me, save me now, O Lord. 
Perfect me in the confession of your name. Order me to be received into your glory. Having said this, she turned her eyes toward her executioners, saying, Fulfill the orders you have received. And upon this, the sword fell, and she was beheaded. And a voice from heaven was heard saying, Because you have fought for my name, Prisca, enter into the kingdom of heaven with all my saints. And when, the, when this was said, the execution, executioners fell on their face and died. On that same day, the 18th of January, the emperor himself was struck dead, writhing in ang agony. When Prisca's remains were later found, they were dazzling white with light and was seen around her head and on her face a smile. We can see that three times during the Prisca's martyrdom, she was sitting on a throne. Christ said at the Last Supper, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you also may be. This place is the kingdom of heaven, the place Christ prepares for those who love him, the place for heirs to the kingdom. And we are as heirs, princes and princesses with thrones awaiting us. The devil doesn't want us to know that each of us are royalty. And he does all he can to have us mar the image of the king in our souls by sin. Prisca was not only royalty by blood, but far more importantly, royalty by grace, the grace of baptism. By this, she and all of us are royalty. Do you not know your dignity? If so, then, imitate your king. Suffer as to reign. Romans chapter 8, verses 16 to 18. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we are children, then heirs. Heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. We recall that when Prisca's torments were increased, she, ex she exclaimed the truth of what was happening. You are too blind to know the blessings you are gaining from me, from the eternal Creator. St. Mar Mary Magdalene de Pazzi explains, You will be consoled according to the greatness of your sorrow and affliction. The greater the suffering, the greater will be the reward. It's clear. The more we suffer worthily, the higher our place in heaven. St. Prisca's passion was filled with great signs and wonders, with great miracles of God's grace. St. Rose of Lima says, without the burdens of afflictions, it is impossible to achieve the heights of grace. The gift of grace increases as the struggle increases. This is true in all of our lives. It's in the times of greatest suffering where the greatest graces are won. Graces for healing and conversion. Once a woman went to see Padre Pio asking him, tell me, Father, why am I so sick? I have been for 30 years. It's true that I can perform my duties, but only with great pain. To which he replied, 
That is a great favor. The Lord has chosen you to suffer. You've got two brothers living a really bad life, and your other relatives aren't much better. For the salvation of their souls, you will suffer for two more years, after which you will be healed. You will have saved all those souls then. Every suffering is a favor, although it's not understood that way. And this is also clear from Fatima, when the angel told the children, above all, accept and endure with submission the sufferings which God wills to send you. And the following year, Our Lady asked the children, do you wish to offer yourselves to God and to endure all the sufferings that he, may, that he may be pleased to send you as an act of reparation for the sins which he has offended, as an act of supplication for the conversion of sinners? And upon the children's acceptance, Our Lady said, Well then, you will have much to suffer, but the grace of God will be your comfort. This is one of the five conditions that Our Lady commanded at Fatima, the acceptance and offering up of suffering. St. Prisca willingly accepted all the sufferings God allowed with submission and courage. And through it all, great signs and wonders occurred. But what is greater? her acceptance of suffering or the wonder she performed. St. Alphonsus, St. Alphonsus teaches, when the Lord gives one an occasion of suffering much, a heavy cross, he shows a greater love for such, for such a one than if he gave them the power to raise the dead to life. For when we work miracles, we are debtors to God. But when we suffer patiently, God becomes, so to say, a debtor to us. St. Prisca's martyrdom was greater than all the miracles she performed. As Christ, who cannot be outdone in generosity, rewarded with what was promised to all Catholics, princes and princesses, through sanctifying grace, who remain faithful unto death, no matter what, the kingdom. Suffer as to reign. We are co-heirs with Christ. If we suffer with him, we will save souls with him, and we will reign with him forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.